Hello and welcome to today's Positive Living, which is with Meg Matthews, who has a new book out today called The New Hot. And I've had a sneak preview, it's brilliant. It's like going down the pub and talking about menopause with your mates that your mates are experts. And Meg's going to talk about the book, she's going to share her menopause experience, and she's going to tell us about the wisdom that menopause has given her. Hope you enjoy it. I know it's amazing, I'm so excited. It's brilliant. I really it. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. I, I've just said in my intro, they've just done a little intro, and I said it's just like being down the pub and talking about menopause with your friends. And your friends are. So they yeah, which is exactly, yeah, it's exactly what I wanted to get across because for me, like, so I'm 54 now, so mine was about 48. So it was about 48, 49. And there was just nothing out there, you know, and because of my dyslexia and my ADHD, there was just nothing that was easy to read, easy to look at, just wanted to answer those quick questions that I needed to be answered. So, you know, there was great, you know, there was very um, like sort of medical um, websites and loads of books with so much printing. But I wanted to hear someone else's story, not just go, these are the 34 symptoms and to go, but, but did you have that? Did you, did you feel like, you know, you were going mad? Did you feel depressed? Did you, did you not, did you sleep at night? Did your hair go thin? You know, did you feel like your life was over? Did you have no libido? I was just like, had all these questions and there was nowhere to go. And, and there wasn't a book that answered them, like how I wanted them to be, like you said, talking to your best friend and not feeling alone. Because medical books, you do still feel alone because you think, well, maybe they've done this on, to 10,000 people and maybe I'm the only one that's going through it and it was such a breath of fresh air when I started to reach out and did like my Instagram and women were DMing me you know, and I just thought right I'll do an IGTV on loss of libido and then sit there thinking oh god what have I done the press are all going to pick up on it they're going to say Meg here goes Meg always the one who out you know goes out the boundaries and I was just waiting for this, but instead I just had these women just DMing and going, thank you, thank you for being so honest. Oh my God, it's not just you. So, you know, it's whatever I was doing, I know that it's working. I think that's the thing. You feel so alone with menopause anyway. And you do feel, because nobody talks about it, like you're the only yeah. one getting these symptoms. So I love the fact that you start each chapter with your story. It was oh. not good. Oh yeah, there was one where you said you tried so many pregnancy tests. And I was like, that was me. <laughs> yes, isn't it? Because you're like, oh my God. You know, it was like, I just haven't had a period, but I was just like, I mean, this is the fact is, I didn't have a period, but I also did, ha did have the marina coil. So what was I actually thinking? Because I couldn't get pregnant. But at the same time is I used to have like a tiny bit of spotting. But then as soon as my partner said, well, I've not noticed anything for like about six months, Meg. And then I was like, oh my God, maybe I'm pregnant. That is what went to my head. It wasn't like, ooh, maybe it's the menopause. And it didn't even come into, into my world. It, you know, I was so far away from ever thinking about perimenopause or the menopause when it's the easiest and it will just put everything together with one little short look at like you open my book and all of a sudden you'll be able to go that's me instead of me spending hundreds of thousands on healers and and acupuncture and tapping and um juice fast and everything to try and fix this problem when it was simply a nine pound prescription from the nhs Body identicals, not bioidenticals, you know, I wouldn't be spending that sort of money. I couldn't really afford to, to do bioidenticals. It's like, you know, when I think that I'm going to be on this till I'm 99 years old, that's another 40 years away, you know. So it's like, wow, you know, that's a lot of money because, you know, you're spending three, four hundred pounds every quarter, you know, and the average woman. Also, that's the other thing. I wanted to do everything on the NHS. I wanted to do everything. Thing that's available my products they could have been expensive you know they could have been in space and k and liberties and you know my face rosy rain face spray which is completely vegan it's natural you know it it could have been in a price point because of the ingredients and the way that is like jalik or anything and jalik is even like there is there's synthetic rose in their face spray and i used to think pay 45 pounds for this 
you know. So I wanted everything to be available at Boots and Superdrug and Holland and Barra and, you know, wherever, because, you know, this doesn't affect just, you know, the a certain person, this will affect every single woman, half of our population. So everything should be made available, information should be out there, you know, um, our GP should be completely trained up to the most knowledge, you know, I mean, this body identicals, people don't even, I mean, doctors don't even know what it is, yeah. you know, and I'm, I want to scream and shout from the rooftops, that's what I want to do, because I don't fit, I just feel, why should anyone, any woman, I have to go through what I did when the the end game or you know what what all I needed to do was so simple I had no knowledge you know I didn't even know that there was a gel I didn't even know um the estrogen progesterone testosterone you know to me that sounded really scary out there and I just thought you know I just thought it would be like doing um you know, like pricking my bloods and like, you know, diabetes and having to see, oh, is my hormones all like this? You know, FSH and do I have to have injections every week and blood tests? I mean, it, this is what I, my head went to. I didn't know that from the age of 45, you didn't even need to have a blood test. Yes, it's good to keep an eye on what's happening in our bodies, but your GP can just give you this simple gel that you can rub on and, you know, the, the scares of the breast cancer and that big cloud that you said HRT to me, six seven years ago it said hrt just went cancer 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 you know and and there there isn't really the the, the research and we have today and the up-to-date stuff we have today on all of this is it simple it's easy it works and you know if you have a thousand women in the room seven of those women will get breast cancer and out of those seven women we take women who drink uh, two glasses of wine or not a night obesity and and then also then there will just be the women that you know would just have breast cancer but that percentage is so small for the way that you will feel for the way that you you know you will basically get your life back what i really like about the book as well is that we talk about lifestyle because there's very polarized debate in the menopause world at times if you're either for hrt or you're not and yeah to me, the two things are important. You need to be as healthy as possible to get the HRT as much help as possible and to get yourself yeah. good. And that's what I really like. Yeah. You talk about lifestyle too. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a lifestyle um, change. And, you know, it's, I've always tried to be, you know, healthy and everything. But the, the lifestyle, you know, we have to sort of, you know, don't just be putting all this gel on, but still like drinking a load. And, you know, we have one body for one life. You know, we have our body and we should. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'll put my hands up. I've, you know, really done lots of things as my colorful 90s and everything. I've been on quite a journey. But I just know that when I was coming through the menopause, all of a sudden I decided to really look after my body and, and to, you know, to listen to it and to know that, you know, that odd cake and, and thing is not a treat when I used to always call it a treat, you know, and, you know, we should be so mindful around sugar, you know, and I know it's just things I'll hear because I feel like it actually because everyone goes, you know, your lifestyle, and I go, here I go again, and I hear myself thinking, sleep, so important, drinking loads of water, so important. The reason that they're always said and they're trying to push them down the throat because they work, but I've also gone, oh, here they go, sleep more, drink more water, don't eat so many carbs. But the thing is, they all really work. A clean diet, you know, and, and resting our bodies and not eating and grazing all the time and, and giving our bodies time to, to, um, to, to break down the foods. And the cleaner they are, the better that you feel. I mean, this happens, you know, and I, I had to do it, but it was like the last straw, mm -hmm. you know. And then I just thought, right, I need to actually... I've been saying it enough times and I've heard it enough times. So I, you know, it's just putting it into, into my, my lifestyle. Yeah. Making it work. What I got, the overwhelming oh, from <laughs> My dog, he's oh, just there. Look, look. Oh, bless. <laughs> you're all right. You're all right. Hello, Gorgia. <laughs> I know. He's like, every time someone walks past the house, he'll bark. <laughs> What I thought was you have this real sense of being happy and comfy with yourself. But I get the feeling that you didn't have 
in your, you know, your Britpop days? How much Nothing, you no. With um, yeah, I didn't. I never felt good enough. I never felt thin enough. I never felt comfortable in my body. I just felt I was always sort of striving to, to be the better, you know, to, to, to be that person. And it's so exhausting doing that. It was so exhausting to always be on a diet. It was so exhausting, you know, just exhausting. And then to actually feel comfortable in your skin. And, you know, I don't know, I think of being older, it was just like, fuck it, I don't really care what anyone says about me anymore. Actually, I like me, but I was very vulnerable to, to a lot of what the press wrote about me and me and I was, you know, just, just wasn't, you know, comfortable in Meg. And now I can just sit here and actually say that I do love myself, which is really important. And it's not an ego thing. It's like a feeling that actually Meg is enough is quite an amazing you know, place to get to in life because that other life is exhausting. Do you think menopause helped that? Like the changing of your hormones? Do you think that had an yeah. impact on that? Yeah, I really honestly, that's why I did the book because I'd come to a place in my life. So I turned 50 and I still was feeling a little bit like not, you know, wasn't, you know, still had those little isms going on and, you know, but I sort of slowly and just started to accept Meg, accept the menopause. You know, I did grieve a little bit when my period stopped, but I actually felt like I could accept it and this was going on and this was going to be all right. And I just sort of felt empowered. And I felt, I felt empowered because also I was being of service to women and I felt every day that I woke up, I had a purpose in life. So, you know, it was felt really good. So what I feel that I'm doing in life is what I'm supposed to do. I think I'm supposed to have that platform and use any sort of celebrity status or anything that I've got to actually help women. So I think everything just sort of came together really well. And your daughter, Anais, writes a little bit in it. In yeah. Talking about the impact on you. Were you aware of the impact your menopause was having on your partner and those around no. you? No. No, well, but, you know, I just, I just kept thinking, God, you know, you just don't, you don't really, you know, I just knew that every day was exhausting and every day was a struggle. And, and, you know, and it was just like, God, is this life? Is this what I'm being dealt? So you go through a whole of your life and then all of a sudden I thought, wow, you know, I've hit 49, hitting 50. Surely my life is going to come together in one stage. And it was like, it still hadn't, you know, I still felt like, oh, here I go. I don't know. I just thought all of a sudden I sort of always pictures this, you know, when you're in your thirties, you think when I'm 50, I'm going to be everything together and I wouldn't know everything will just be fine. And it's not, and it just gets even worse, you know? So and then, you know, then, of course, I broke up with my partner and Anais was amazing. But that's because we have a very open relationship. And, you know, and I, as the minute that I got back from the doctors and I'd got all this information, I sat everyone in a circle and I just, we talked about it. And, you know, I said, I'm going through the menopause and this is it. And, and of course, there was the jokes because there's the jokes that go with everything. And I think people joke about it because they don't know what to say to you. So... I don't think they're trying to be mean. I think people's way of reflecting it is like, oh, you're over the hill, oh, you're all dried up. But it's like, not meanly, but they're just little jokes because when you actually say to them, actually, I'm going through the menopause, what do they say? All right, mate, or yeah, great. It's, you know, they don't know what to say. So they're men or, you know, I know we'll have a little bit of that sort of, you know, women just go, I'm like, well, what, what have I got leprosy? You know, it's just like, you know, don't talk about it because you might pass it on to me. Hmm. Some girlfriends like, no, 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 too much information. I, I don't want to know because it's not going to happen to me. And I'm just like, yeah, okay, let's wait and see. You know, because it will. Some way, something will affect them. They might not get all the symptoms, but they probably will get one or two. Yeah. That's what I like as well is that um, it means that your daughter's generation are not going to grow up completely ignorant of it because yeah. you and you know the positivity group are talking about it and getting the word out and that's just going to be brilliant for the next lot of women who come through yeah without a doubt and then hopefully you know I'm, I'm going to want to lobby in parliament I want to get together with some really strong women that really think like me you know we want to get changes I mean um, there's some women that I work that I know who basically got the curriculum changed this September so it will now be the menopause like Diane and these great people and then there's 
you know, other women that I want to start getting together because we're a very good, strong network of women in our menopause world. And, you know, we want our GPs to be trained, to be up to date. I want, you know, like um, menopause in the workplace, you know, by the government, it doesn't say that any, you don't have to have a menopause system in place system i've forgotten the word my dyslexia so you know um you don't have to have a menopause system in place within but i want to make it mandatory so it's like when you're pregnant you're allowed to have maternity leave you're about to have this there should be definitely flexible working hours and you know and not just like you know some water and a little fan mm. you know hr should have in you know basically that everybody is prepared and not women do not have to put their hands up and, and sort of step into the limelight to say, I'm going through the menopause. It should already be in place for all women. So hopefully we can get this sorted, but especially with um, our doctors in this country, because, you know, they, they are not brought up to date enough. I mean, some of them only get, get trained three hours out of the seven years on the menopause. I mean, three hours, but you know, the up-to-date stuff, they're, they're still being taught, you know, the old synthetic HRT, which we know, you know, when you take it orally and it goes through your liver, it can cause clotting, but with the gel, it goes straight into the bloodstream. So this is just simple stuff that even me can articulate. So, you know, and it's not the GP's fault because they're exhausted and they, you know, they have eight or 10 minutes, but that's the other reason, like on my app, there is a system tracker there as well. So I, I always say that women who are going to go to their GPs to be really knowledgeable before they go in, because it's not the GP's fault. But if you do want to get body identicals and get the eustro progesterone and get the estradiol gel and everything that I always talk about, you know, when you have your system tracker and you take all this in and you write it down and you know what you're going to say when you get in because the problem i had was i just burst kept bursting into tears because i couldn't actually describe what was wrong with me except i was overwhelmed by life i couldn't i couldn't really breathe i had anxiety well all they could do all they could diagnose me with was antidepressants which you know i still take today and i don't think there should be any shame around this either we do know that Women who suffer really badly with perimenopausal and still have their periods, we know that you can give them like selitropan or one of these antidepressants just for 10 days during the month will help their PMS and their perimenopause. Now, I'd never even heard of that. And that's something quite new. I always thought you had to take an antidepressant for months and years and couldn't get off it. But now they've done more research that you can just take this for that 10 days so women do not have to go through pms and perimenopause before their period when all their estrogens have dropped and this is really interesting and this is just knowledge that could be out there and it could help millions of women that suffer badly each month you know yeah you're absolutely right i had a gp that she called me and then said she would call back the following week because she was going to a course about menopause and i thought oh. well, it's great you're going to a course but I don't really want my GP to say, I need to find out all this information first. You know, I'm, this is yes. something for every woman. So why don't you just know about it? Yeah. yeah. And it's so frustrating. And the, and the thing is that before, before it was happening to me, I now know that lots of my, you know, my using and drinking excessively was a part of because I'm a recovering alcoholic. But also it was like when I was feeling that shitty, I would just drink more. And then it was like a whole cycle um, so you feel worse the next day and, you know, it's an ongoing battle. But now when I look back, I was definitely perimenopause. And, you know, when they say 10 to 15 years, I know that when I was about 39, 40, I definitely was from just, you know, looking at the way that I felt and everything. I just put it down to my lifestyle. I just put it down to my irregular thinking. You know, I was always like, oh God, I just don't feel very good. I've got a headache. I feel foggy. And I would know that a few days a week, this was happening to me. But nothing was there that I could just say, feel, feel like, oh, it's the perimenopause. Just thought it was me and I, was no, and I wouldn't share it with anybody else because I thought it was just me going through this. And if I said that to anyone else, do you ever feel like this in the month? They would be going, no, I don't. But because you're just not, you can't pinprick anything. So you're just going through life, aren't you? Feeling like, wow, you know, why can't this, why can't someone just... It's just relate to it all and, and help me not to feel that I'm on my own. And that's exactly what I wanted to do because I don't want anyone else to have to suffer. 
you know, and it is suffering. And I will say that. And people might go, wow, but it's a, you know, a hard word, but it, I did suffer. Mm -hmm. You know, my life, you know, my friends, my family, everyone suffered through with me. You know, it wasn't just me. I mean, I went on family holidays where I didn't do anything except couldn't really get out. I really, and I love, I'm a sun lover and I, you know, the sun was way too hot and the thought of driving on day trips, you know, when we would sort of plot up somewhere in Airbnb and then decide to go off. I just didn't do any of it. I just was so, I was, just wasn't present at all. And it, you know, everybody suffers and you suffer yourself the most, but also everyone close to you suffers as well. I think the book will go a big way towards just making it more relatable and understandable yeah. people because we all went through Britpop as well. We went to the 80s, you know, so it's, it's just the next generation. This is just normal. Yeah. That this is what it's all about. This is life. Yeah, and it's it's so good. Like, um, it's because everybody that I've been doing my interviews and podcasts with, they we're all about the same age. So when I was sort of, and I'm, you know, and we've all sort of grown up together because I see people that are editors and like Sarah Bailey and all people that were, you know, more juniors back then, and now all like the editors, and it's like we can all sort of relate because you know they I've been a familiar face then and then we so we've grown up together but it's just so nice because back then when when I would be doing interviews or whatever everyone was um you know it was like they weren't like the editors and they weren't this and they weren't that and they weren't you know it was just a conversation about what I wore or you know who I was dating whatever but now it's like the women are very we're all sort of on this journey together and there's one thing that really pulls us together and it's it makes it feel like you know it's a very um we're all going to do this and I think all these women like you and everyone else who starts you know you're all going to be helping towards this women knowing and making it you know um making it an everyday thing to read about you know I mean even um I think it was even like two years ago Grazia did a thing on, on it and I just could not believe that they even did because their demographic is so young yeah. and I was just a bit and that's when I just thought yes things are starting to change you know because you know usually they're ready to be like no 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 wrong demographic you know keep well away but they wanted to do something on um, the menopause so I just thought little things like that are going to we're going to help make this a better place for women to move into you know, because if we think about it, we were never talking about it. I mean, like 10 years ago, it wasn't even, I mean, now you've got Michelle Obama coming out, you've got everybody coming out and, and talking about this. And it's like, when I, when I re, I did, um, I, I had an evening where I launched my website in two, January 2018. And, you know, who would have gone to a menopause website launch. Now, I wouldn't have been seen dead five years ago before that, and I'd said that. I was just like, someone would have said, I would have been like, that's so not gonna happen to me, so not gonna happen to me. And I used to breathe that under my breath, you know? So, you know, we are changing. We are helping to make this a better place for women. If you had three tips to give the next person who's gonna go through menopause, what would they be? Three tips. Number one, um, um, read my book. <laughs> Number two, um, basically, definitely, um, you know, definitely read up, get your information. Yes. And if you're going to go to your GP, you know, just be prepared and do not wait around. Do not just sit there like trying everything that I did. So I've done everything so you can read about it. But, you know, if you are feeling out of sync, you know, and don't just, just take it for granted that it's a lifestyle, you know, start listening to your body and definitely without doubt, just, just, you know, like I said, look it up, get the app, get the tracker and then go and see your doctor. Don't wait around because year after year, you will just, you know, you do need help. And once you get back, you know, you'll, you once, I mean, I put this gel on within four days, my night sweat stopped. I mean, it was beyond how it regulated it. Brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing this time with us. No, thank you so much.